Hi guys, um, quick impromptu video today actually. Um, as you guys know, my 10 star games pack, let's grab a couple. In fact, let's grab these three. Um, do not actually work. And in fact, I got to the point of, because Barbarian was one of the worst in terms of the noises it was making, and I've tried cleaning them all. And so I took them apart, I took Barbarian apart, as in what I've done is I've actually, and you're gonna hate me for this, but needed doing, and it revealed the problem. Because um, what I noticed is that where I was trying to turn it from here, what was happening is the disc was turning as in this center part, but the actual disc was not. So where I thought I was cleaning the disc, I was just cleaning the same spot um, over and over again, because what had happened is it had become separated inside. So the problem with these is because the label goes all the way around, without wrecking the label, you can't open the disc from this end to replace the innards. So I had to take the slider off. Um, I'm not put it back properly at the moment because I still haven't glued it back together. Um, basically just to fill you in, what I've had to do is I took it apart by taking that off, opening it up and just to check and yeah, completely separate. Um, so as in the, this center has separated from the thing and they, that, that explains the sort of gritty squeaky noise I get from all of these. I think they've all in such bad shape that the, the disc isn't allowed to freely spin um, and it's actually separating at the center. So I have begun the process of rebuying these, which is annoying, but I'm looking out for bargains from people that swear blind that they are running. Um, this was just a guy selling his kid stuff from his loft, so that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is, funnily enough, 10 games, 10 discs. Here is an unopened pack of, yes, they're um, uh, um, 1.44 meg discs as opposed to 720, but that's fine for what my purpose is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the ADF files to these discs and just put them in the cases for the time being as backups. I've got a list here and I'll mark them as backups. I'm not trying to you know, set these up to sell them in the future as originals. They're gonna be backups because they're only ADF files, not actual image files, because I don't have a grease weasel yet. Uh, but I, and I've made a list of which ADF files are cracked and which ones aren't, because some of these actually don't have cracks. So how am I doing this? Well, good question. Here's some, some similar bits to the bits that I bought. Um, and yes, I've had to make not a cable because I did manage to buy, uh, and I'll quickly show you the setup. So that's what we're looking at here, one RS232 cable. But as you can see, it's nine pin. So I had to make myself, the shop didn't have an adapter. So I've made myself an adapter. That's, that, I made that. Um, so I've made myself an adapter. And this end, I actually had an adapter already to go from there to USB, which ironically, that's from the uh, leftover from my other hobby, which is cars, from a device that I had to um, change the mapping on a car, uh, my Chrysler 300C when I had one of those, um, and to actually uh, download the setup that I wanted, I needed a USB cable to go to the device that then plugged into the car. Um, and that's where that, that's the legacy for that cable. It wasn't problem free, I had to actually do a bit of jiggery pokery because this device is no longer supported by Windows. Windows 10, wouldn't you know? So nothing's ever simple in the land of Amiga. I'll link to probably Dan Wood's video on Amiga Explorer. He covers that. Look, we've got a brand new box and we've got a couple of things to do. One is this needs opening, but also I don't think this is valid anymore, but we could win a holiday. So scratch verbatim to win. Peel off label for details here. So if we open this, I believe. Oh. Okay, how to enter. Where's the bit we need to scratch? There's the instructions. Scratch the panel below. There's nothing to scratch. Nothing scratches. That doesn't scratch. Scratch the panel below with a coin and mail too. Oh, it's not scratching. I don't have a coin, I have a screwdriver. There's nothing there. What? There's no scratchy. There's nothing to... Let's get this off.
Oh, here we go. Oh, it reveals. Maybe I did actually need to use it with a coin. It says something, but it doesn't say verbatim. Well, there we go. Right, more importantly, let's open this. I didn't think I went up, well, I don't think I want a holiday, which is a shame. Let's open this. That's the nice bit. Brand new pack of discs. And, oh, look at this. I was expecting them to be black for some reason. I don't know why, but they're not. They're, they're gray, which matches the other ones that I have, which were, these are apparently Apple formatted. The other ones I had, and look, they've got disc bags. This is my thing, I think. I think disc bags have become my thing. Um, and these are, have disc bags, so that's beautiful. Right, I'm gonna take one of these out and we're gonna put this in the Amiga. Right, okay, that's in the Amiga. What are we doing next? I'll show you what we're doing. What I've got running here is Amiga Explorer from Cloanto and Amiga Forever. Um, and so what I've got running on the other screen here, let me just zoom in there, is Amiga Explorer. Okay, and now all I have to do with that disk in the drive is do this and go and find my Amiga stuff and uh, 10 star games. That's what I'm writing. And there we go. There's the first game, right? So all I have to do is put that down there. I'm just going to refresh this because what should now be in there is DF zero, right? So all I have to do now is grab Amigas, drop it onto DF zero. And then we've got a little thing to say that it's copying across. And look what's happening over here. Nothing on the Amiga screen, but if we look down, the drive is writing. So that's actually writing the ADF across my RS-232 cable onto a floppy disk. Um, and of course, because it's writing an image, it'll basically initialize it at the same time. So there's only one more thing to do really while that writes and I won't be um, it Takes about eight minutes So I won't bore you with all of that, but look what we have in here We have labels So now what I can do Is do another wonderful thing Which is write on a label It's gonna flip over that way. Well, that's fine. Right, so this will be the first one. This will be Amigas. So we'll actually number these as well. So we'll go one, Amigas. I'm gonna put back up. And I'm going to consult my list. My list says that this ADF is cracked, so I'm just going to put that as well. Just so I know that when I put that in, there we go. That's how I'm going to label these up. So, just thought I'd share that with you. That's writing away. Obviously, I'm not going to make you watch that whole thing because that's going to take seven minutes by itself. But there we go. That's using Amiga Explorer to write ADFs directly to a floppy on the Amiga itself. And what you can do is you can do the reverse as well. So what I could do is I can actually drag um, a DF, um, an ADF from the Amiga onto the PC. Um, and what it would actually do is it would actually then 
create a local ADF file. Um, so I'll use that as well, even though I have Workbench and everything, I'll use that to create myself my own set of backups, because obviously what I've got with this Amiga is I've got, the games will be copy protected, so it's no good for that, but it will definitely be good for backing up my original copy of Workbench. Um, and the other discs that came with it. I assume I'll be able to do it for Deluxe Paint, um, but very first Amiga. I don't even know what's on that yet. That's gonna be another uh, part of another episode. And the Amiga Extras disc, that's worth doing. Deluxe Paint is worth doing. And I could even do FA18 Interceptor, even though I know that's an easy, easy ADF to come across, um, just so I know it's an original backup of the exact version that I have. Okay, what you're seeing on the left there is me finishing editing this video um, because what I suddenly realized is that I didn't actually show you the, the fact that it, that it worked. So you would have seen me copying files across, writing a very messy label. But just to show you, so the end result of that, all of these now have, and I did all, all 10, um, all of them now have a backup. So it was Amiga, Amigas that we were doing. They've all got a backup still in its disc bag because disc bags are awesome. Um, right, they've all they've all had that done. So just to show you, that's that. Take that out. The Amiga is fired up. Throw that in here. OneDrive is still trying to back up my scanners folder, even though I tell it to block the app. That's pretty annoying. Um, and let's have a look at what happens. So obviously this one was marked as having a crack tray. And so what should happen, left mouse trainer, right for normal. Because that's the crack. We don't want the crack. Flipping, oh, I could turn that off anyway. Stupid OneDrive, block the app. Um, so there we go. Done. So that's running off a disc, and yes, it's a 1.44 disc, but I don't care. And here's me playing Amigas as badly as I always did. In fact, I used to be, I used to be able to play this for hours. And now I just can't, we're gonna to have to visit this when I get a, an actual working copy. So speaking of that, my plan from here that I've literally just thought of is, and just sort of had a bit of a start play about, that is all well and good, but A, it's compared to the original, it's up the wrong way, which annoys me. Okay, but also, what if I did this? And this is just a proof of concept. What if I did that? And notice what I've put on there. So I've quickly in Photoshop made up a template for some of these labels. I've scanned in four of them and I've made a template which means I can put the words backup cracked on those that are cracked and backup on those that are backed up um, without a crack row. Um, and then I can do some nice labels. I don't have any printable stickies at the moment, so I'll have to get some, but that's where I'm planning on taking that. I think that'll look a lot nicer. Um, and that's also given me an idea for another thing that I'm planning on doing with these cases as, these cases as well. But um, I think that'll be a separate project. Just to also give you a heads up, as I said in the bit that I'd already previously recorded, I could drag, put a disc in the Amiga and, and drag um, using Amiga Explorer, the ADF back across and thus create backups of my original workbench disks. I've done that now since I filmed that. Um, and just another quick heads up, sorry for any motion sickness. I have found issues with that, in fact, I can't even see it now, um, that USB cable I was using, it, it does keep um, freezing, like you'll get an error at the end of the, um, the disk copy, but the disk copy has actually completed, but then you have to reset everything between disks and that was becoming tedious. So what I've actually done is, you may have recognized this machine from an old episode. Okay, so that booting up in XP, I've put Amiga Explorer on that as well. Via a VGA cable, I can bring that up in this screen as well. So I can have the Amiga on here, XP on here. And because that has an actual physical COM port, I don't have any issues because it takes that USB adapter out of the equation and it is rock solid. And ironically, 
it's even faster than doing it on, the, on this Windows 10 machine via the USB cable. So that, that is a nice improvement as well. Okay, thank you guys for watching.